From the state capitol in Madison, Camp Randall Stadium, it's the Division II championship game in the WIAA between the Menominee Indians and the Ashwaubenon Jaguars. Hi, everybody. It's Pat Hughes, along with the longtime Milwaukee South High School football coach, Bill Bartholomew. Bill, we've got a great matchup here in Division II. Ashwaubenon and Menominee both come into the game with very impressive records of 11 and 1. This is an exciting finale to the uh, to the playoffs. Having this opportunity to uh, to see Menominee from the Big Rivers Conference and Ashwaubenon from the Bay Conference, uh, this is going to be an exciting game. We've got some great athletes and uh, great coaches matching head to head. Let's take a look at a couple of those great athletes right now. Running back Adam Roach for the Menominee Indians has gained 1,900. And 93 yards this season. Look at that average, a staggering 9.2. When a, you have a back uh, similar to Adam Roach to gain that kind of yardage, and he's over 4,000 for his career, uh, that's a phenomenal. He's a preseason All American in Street and Smith magazine. That tells you how good an athlete he is. Aaron's, he's a national figure. Aaron Stecker is also a pretty good athlete, Bill. He's a Terrific running back, number 27 in green for Ashwaubenon. He scored four touchdowns in the semifinal win against Sussex Hamilton. Aaron Stecker uh, is a single back uh, in a run and shoot, uh, wide open type of offense. And Aaron Stecker will make you miss. He'll run over you. He'll run around you. He is that good of an athlete. Uh, people that have played against him said he's awesome. It should be a terrific matchup. The Division II state final between Ashwaubenon and Menominee coming up next. We are just seconds away from the kickoff now in the Division II championship game between Menominee, the Indians in white with red numerals and the Jaguars of Ashwaubenon in green. White numerals, gold pants, they look a little bit like the Green Bay Packers. Ashwaubenon's head coach is Ken Golomsky in his 10th year. He is 56 and 51. That's Joe Labuda right there. Joe, the Menominee head man, in his fifth year, a very impressive 44 and 10. There is Ken Golomsky from Ashwaubenon. Each team with sterling records of 11 and 1. Ashwaubenon will receive. One thing we should point out right at the top, Menominee is a little bit banged up. They are playing without two of their key players, Kevin Path, a linebacker and a fullback. Path out with a bout with mononucleosis as you look at the officials for this Division II final. And Bill Engler, one of the fastest players in the state, out with a bad knee. Ashwabanon to receive, Aaron Stecker, the great running back, number 27, is waiting at about his own seven-yard line. There is Aaron Stecker. He has gained just under 2,000 yards this year. Trevor Tilke, who is also the quarterback for Menominee, will kick off for the Indians. Menominee upset Monroe a week ago, 6-3. to three. That snapped a 43-game Winning streak for the Monroe Cheesemakers. We're underway. The Division II Finals, Stecker on his own 10. Stecker to the 23 and then brought down. I'll tell you what, this Menominee team not hurting in the emotion department at all as you look at the offensive line personnel of Ashwabanon and also the so-called skill positions. Borowitz, a multi-talented quarterback. Stecker, the main man. It's a one-back attack for the Jaguars. Borowitz has five different receivers with 10 or more catches this year. In motion is Kirchmar. Borowitz in trouble, throwing it to nobody. Kirchmar got hung up. He was being guarded that time out in the flat by Menominee's Brent Pember. Now the Menominee defensive line is on your screen. They've got some very talented defensive players, Menominee. 
They have allowed only three points total in the last two weeks. They shut out Sun Prairie 34-0, and they defeated Monroe 6-3 in overtime. Second and 10, Borowitz to throw again. This ball is incomplete. Craig Glish, the intended receiver, and Mike Morrow, number 20, was there to knock it away. Good timing on the hit, Bill Bartholomew. Morrow hit the receiver just about the same time the ball got there. And now on third down, Ashwabanon working without a huddle from the shotgun. Borowitz throwing long and incomplete. Again, going to Glish, it'll be fourth and 10. Utaka Springer supplied the defensive coverage. Ashwabanon coming out and uh, trying to establish the pass immediately. Uh, Menominee coming with uh, strong man-to-man -man coverage and an awfully hard rush, mixing up their fronts, trying to uh, confuse the uh, blockers from Ashwabanon. Now Brian Borowitz will Put the ball away. Oh, beautiful putt, a twisting spiral. All the way back to the 35. This ball will be wall. taken. Rich Sinker. Check it, that was Adam Roach. Roach all the way to the 38-yard line. Big play, a 22-yard return after a 43-yard punt. Adam Roach showed immediately why he is considered one of the best running backs in the state. Menominee's offense. Tilke, the quarterback. Double tight ends on the right. This is Roach. Roach powering his way down to the 30-yard line. Roach picking up seven at second and three. The Ashwabanon defense They've given up quite a few points lately. Ashwabanon winning 46 to 20 in the semis against Sussex Hamilton. They beat Marinette 38-27 and Whitefish Bay 34-13. Adam Roach again gets the call. Tim Saha of Ashwabanon, a 290 pound defensive tackle made the stop. This might be close enough for a measurement Nope, it's going to be third down and a yard. First two minutes of the game, no score. Division II championship. Tilke, look at that. 13 touchdown passes and only 50 attempts. Adam Roach has the first down. Roach is a big kid, Bill. That, uh, check it from Menominee, that, that carry was by Josh Feely. Feely had the carry for the first down, but Roach 6'2", 195 and runs a, a minus 4.4 or 4.5 uh, 40-yard dash, which tell you tells you how good of an athlete he really is. That's sprinter speed. He's a big kid. This is Roach right here, outside right, cutting back at the 20, and now inside the 20 at the 17. Menominee is coming out in the uh, I formation, a uh, little bit of wing T, and uh, unbalanced line, basically power football. Chuck Weber supplied the blocking quick number pitch. 77. Leading with the tackle, lead back, power football. Second and two for Menominee on the 19 yard line. Call it the 18 yard line. Roach Same play again coming to the left. near side. Roach to the 10. Inside the 10 to the seven yard line. Jeremy Kreischer made the tackle. John Otis also had part of the hit. It's first and goal for Menominee. The uh, sweep that had been run the previous play, they just flipped it over, ran it to the wide side of the field. Again, Eshwabanam is gonna have to come up and contain that sweep. Adam Roach off left guard to about the five yard line. Kreischer again made the tackle. It's second and goal from the five. 
Menominee uh, has a very fast tempo. They're into the huddle, they're out of the huddle, they're back, to, they're up on the line of scrimmage, and they keep that pressure on the defense. Second and goal from the five. Roach, outside right. He's gonna get into the end zone, I believe. He is into the end zone for a touchdown. With an unbalanced line, line uh, pulling the, pulling the uh, offensive tackle and the slot back in front of the ball carrier, Ashwabanon is not able to get over and pursue and be able to close off that sweep. Adam Roach is a terrific runner and powerful and fast. Now for the extra point, Brent Miller. Miller had the game-winning field goal last week. This one is partially blocked at the line of scrimmage and no good. It looked like one of the defensive linemen, maybe Marvin Hendry, got a hand on that uh, kick off the foot of Brent Miller. Miller is quite a story. Miller had the game-winning field goal to beat Monroe in overtime last week after his field goal late in the fourth quarter had tied the game. And those are his only two field goals ever. Folks, if you're enjoying the game, and we certainly hope that you are, give us a call at 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1188. Thanks for watching Wisconsin Public Television. Let's watch the touchdown again by Adam Roach, a five-yarder. We'll get to that momentarily. Menominee takes a quick 6-0 lead with 8.38 to play in the first quarter. Roach scoring his 27th touchdown of the year. It's the power sweep pulling the, uh, the fullback out in, in front, plus the tackle. Adam Roach just does a fine job. There was a fumble and a recovery by Menominee in the end zone for the touchdown. With that size and speed, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that Roach will play beyond his high school days. Now Trevor Tilke ready to boot the ball to that man, possibly Aaron Stecker. And a pretty good kick, Stecker at the five. Stecker with lots of room, however. And he gets to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for Ashwabanon, an 18-yard return by Aaron Stecker. Menominee Indians uh, are known as a very physical and uh, very physical football team. Ashwabanon will have to match that physical effect, particularly up front at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Borowitz, the quarterback, to Aaron Stecker on a draw play. Lots of room for Stecker. He could go all the way to the 50, the 40, the 30. Stecker all the way for a touchdown. 77 yards. And suddenly the game is tied 6 6. Wow. This is a delay, a slight delay draw. Stecker does an awful lot in his own. Once he gets in the secondary, he just runs away from people. You know what, Bill? I think we highlighted the two right kids <laughs> at the top of the telecast, Stecker and Roach. They both have a touchdown for their respective clubs. And now Borowitz boots the extra point beautifully. And suddenly Ashwabanon leads 7-6. to six. As we said earlier, both teams are explosive. Opening up in the initial, the initial possession, scoring a touchdown. We'll see which team now can come up with the defense to stop the uh, that potent offense. 
Menominee has been able to rush the ball inside and outside. Next weekend, Bill, the Badger hockey team takes on Northern Michigan in a matchup of the 1990 and 1991 NCAA hockey champions. The Badgers against Northern Michigan next Friday and Saturday on Wisconsin Public Television. I like the way Stecker cut to the outside near midfield. And then it was a foot race, and very few guys are going to catch him. You talked about his speed earlier, Bill. Well, when you have the defense uh, spread out as much as they do with the uh, wide open uh, formation that they're using, a single back, when Stecker gets into the secondary, it's a one on one situation, and there's not too many athletes, even in the Menominee Indians defensive backfield, that are going to be able to stay with him. Here's the play again, and a great call. Slight delay. The offense, the defensive line from Menominee was charging upfield and it literally ran right by Stecker. He knew what to do with the open field, didn't he? 77 yards. Ashwabanon striking like lightning to take the lead, seven to six. Borowitz boots it all the way to Adam Roach. Roach. Roach almost broke a big one. He stumbles at the 27-yard line. And now it's Menominee's turn on offense. In eight of their 12 games this year, Menominee has led at halftime by 25 or more points. You can see their big victory in the semifinals over Monroe. Their only loss was to a Minnesota high school, Cambridge, 47-0. Here's Roach. Roach to the 33, a gain of six. John May made the tackle. Monomany is coming out with the uh, strong slot formation to the wide side of the field, running the pitch to Adam Roach. It, they, it has not been stopped yet. Picked up six yards, second and four. You know, Roach was battling the flu earlier this week. He was sick for a couple of days, didn't practice, but he looks uh, at the very top of his game here tonight. Roach outside right, tackled beautifully by Tim Saha. Saha, the 290-pound defensive lineman. There he is. But he's got some quickness to go along with that size. To be able to catch Adam Roach, obviously. That was a great move. Third and three. Menominee trailing seven to six. Midway through a very exciting first period. Reverse inside handoff and on the way is Mike Morrow. Morrow to the 30, the 20, to the 15 and ridden out of bounds. John May made the tackle after a 51-yard gain by Mike Morrow. Pat, this is the wing T inside counter reverse uh, that we've seen from a number of teams in the playoffs. Menominee breaks it for the long gain. Morrow is only 5'7". He's a junior. In a game against Hudson this year, he scored three touchdowns on only four carries. Here's Adam Roach to throw the ball to the end zone. Morrow's got it. Touchdown, Menominee. Adam Roach throwing a touchdown pass to Mike Morrow on the option play. And Menominee back in the lead. Looks like the pitch sweep. He pulls up and throws. Morrow getting behind the defenders. Explosiveness. They're going for two, Menominee. Now the whistle blows. I don't know why, Bill, but it always surprises you when you see a, a running back throw the ball left-handed like that. You know that the option is part of the game of football, but for some reason, 
when he is running to this side and he throws it left-handed, it almost always surprises you. Walter Payton exactly. was left-handed, and he would surprise you. Well, obviously, uh, the success on that sweep play has been so outstanding throughout the year for Menominee uh, to be able to run that option with the, uh, with the pass is, is a basic part of their offense. Now from only a yard and a half away, Roach off left tackle, and he gets into the end zone for a two-pointer. Roach scoring the two-pointer. There might have been a penalty at the end of the play, which will be tacked on to the kickoff, I believe. A personal, personal foul, foul against Ashwabanov. 6.27 to play in the first period. Menominee leading Ashwabanon 14 to 7. Boy, what a great start to this game in Division Two. Adam pulling up. Good effort uh, by the uh, defenders. However, here is Roach slashing off left tackle to get into the end zone. And, and there's the penalty right there at the end of the play. I'm not sure exactly who it was, but it'll cost Ashwabanon 15 yards on the penalty. Now, you know, you always think about the possibility of an onside kick when you get the advantage to kick off from the 45 yard line of the opponent you figure even if you fail here Bill you're still looking at about a 30 or 35 yard line start of the possession for the opponent what do you think it's a good uh, I've seen it I've seen it done on a number of occasions uh, purely up to the coach how he feels about his defensive scheme well, Trevor Tilke ready to kick. Menominee leading Ashwabanon 14 to 7. There's the onside, onside kick. And it's in the air. It's taken by Ashwabanon. <laughs> Number 80, Ryan Rabida almost pulled a shocker and ran it back all the way, but he was stopped at midfield. A 15-yard return by Rabida. One of the uh, important parts of an onside kick is a safety man. That time, Rabida almost broke it for the score. Anything can happen in a high school game, and a lot of it is happening already in this one. What a great start. Ashwabanon now with the ball. From midfield, Borowitz to Stecker, cutting back at the 50. Stecker to the 45. Stecker still on his feet. What a great individual effort to the 40-yard line. A gain of 11 and a first down. Ryan Borowitz that time coming out with the lead option, pitching the ball to Stecker, and Stecker picking up the... Uh, Ashwabanon with a big play offense. They average 37 points a game. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Borowitz, the senior quarterback, ready to throw. A blitz coming. The ball is off, and it's caught at the 12 yard line by Craig Glish. A 28 yard gain. Menominee's doing a very, Menominee coming with a safety blitz here. Excuse me, a linebacker blitz. Borowitz uh, was fortunate enough to get the pass off as quickly as he, as he did. And a nice catch by Glish in front of the defender. First and 10 at the 12 yard line. Here's Stecker outside left. He's to the 10. Stecker to the five. 
and out of bounds near the three. He stopped on a dime beautifully and spun around. That kid's got great balance. Stecker uh, has a change of pace. He's got speed. He can stop, change direction as he does here, spins, moves upfield for an additional five yards. I think we used the word awesome earlier in the uh, uh, telecast. First and goal, or maybe second and a yard. No, nope, it's first and goal. A gain of 10 for Stecker. And Ashwabanon looking to tie the game. Bill, I thought track meets took place in the <laughs> springtime. Right now we've got... Uh, Stecker 97 yards on only three carries. Stecker up the middle. He's close to the goal line. He's in. A touchdown for the Jaguars. Stecker with his second touchdown of the game. Eschwabanen in the uh, wishbone. Power play out of the wishbone. Stecker picking it, picking it up into the inside for the score. Stecker with his Good second. Good job of lead blocking. And the kick is up. The kick is perfect by Ryan Borowitz. And the game is tied at 14. What an amazing first quarter. Still five minutes and 17 seconds to play. So in less than seven minutes of playing time, there have been 28 points put on the board. This is exciting high school football. You've got two outstanding teams with outstanding coaching coaches. Uh, whoever has the ball last tonight may be the winner. <laughs> the defensive coordinators are tearing their hair out up here in the press box. But the fans are turning inside out in their seats. They're loving it. The Division II State Championship. A 14-14 tie. And now Borowitz to kick off. Back deep is Adam Roach, along with Mike Morrow and Brent Pember. Roach on the five, to the 15, to the 25, to the 35, and brought down. A 30-yard return for Adam Roach. Pat Menominee does an excellent job on the uh, special teams. Menominee uh, earlier in the game had run a punt return to help set up their first touchdown. And now uh, an excellent job of blocking on the wedge kickoff return. And they have the ball on their 36-yard line. Inside handoff to Morrow, nothing there. John Otis made the tackle. That's a good looking play. They faked the pitch to Roach. Inside counter trap, and that's the first time Ashwabanon has stopped the, a play for no gain. Menominee in white, Ashwabanon in green. A 14-14 tie, Adam Roach. A short gain this time. Brian Morgan from the secondary came flying in, and he got underneath Roach and forced him to jump over the top of him. You know and that really threw him off balance a little bit. In order to stop the uh, sweep, they've got to bring their contained man up, who happens to be the strong safety, in order to uh, stop that uh, tremendous pressure. Either a strong safety or cornerback, depending on what coverage you have. If you're in a cover two with two safeties, the cornerback's got out, got, has the uh, outside responsibility. It's third and 10. Tilke play faking. Tilke with lots of time. He's got his man for a first down. Travis Lenz made the catch. 
A clutch third down conversion, a gain of 12. Good pass blocking up front by the offensive line. And Lenz, a senior tight end, who made a huge 42-yard catch all the way down to the eight-yard line in the game against Monroe to set up the tying field goal, makes his first catch of the night. Here's Roach to the near side. Roach into Jaguar territory, a gain of four. James McNeil brought him down. That time, uh, Menominee came out in a twin uh, twin set, trips set, excuse me, to the uh, left side, right side of the field, and uh, down block and was able to get outside. However, Eshwabinam is doing a much better job of containing that sweep. I look for uh, I look for a little bit more uh, inside counterplay coming from Menominee. Here's the last play. Ryan Beaumier made the tackle, part of the tackle. It's second down and six. Roach off right tackle. Roach gang tackled after a gain of four down to the 45-yard line. The inside backers, Kreischer and Otis, and the defensive back, Kirchmar, made the hit. With a big running back like that, though, Bill, you've almost got to have more than one man make the tackle. Well, Adam Roach is such a strong runner that uh, plus the blocking he's getting up front from his uh, offensive line and the lead blocker and the fullback, it's very difficult to get a good shot at him. And uh, swarm or gang tackling is a necessity. Third and two, Adam Roach, not this time. Eric Hermsen made the tackle. Now it's fourth down. It'll be fourth and one from the 44-yard line. A decision for Joe Labuda. It would appear that they are going to punt the ball away. Nice penetration by uh, Hermsen. Hermsen to uh, stop that play. That's about the only way you're going to stop Roach is by penetrating, getting him before he gets started past the line of scrimmage. Adam Roach ready to punt the ball, so a fake would certainly be a possibility. And there it is, and Morrow's got it to the 30, the 25, the 20. Morrow down to the 12-yard line. Look at the sideline of the Indians. A 32-yard play. This is a great time to run this fake. Uh, it's a counter handoff to the... Uh, to the one of the setbacks, taking it all the way down into, into the red zone. The snap was to the short man, Jason Broadwell. He then handed it off to Mike Morrow. So a wrinkle on a wrinkle on that play. Here's Adam Roach outside. He's going to score. And Menominee scores again. A 12-yard run by Adam Roach. And it's 20 to 14. Believe it or not, we are still in the first quarter of the game. Power eye sweep. Actually, it's a, a power off tackle, but Adam Roach with his speed and able to break it to the outside for the score. Now the extra point try by Brent Miller. It's good. It's 21 to 14, Menominee leading Ash Robinon in an incredible first quarter. Once he got outside, there was no catching Adam Roach. Twenty-one to fourteen. Roach has scored. Roach takes two. the ball inside, breaks it back outside. Just a great job of running. Roach has scored two and thrown for the other Menominee touchdown. Do you realize at this rate that the final score is going to be about 85 to 80? We now knew they had the explosiveness, but uh, we, we thought that about some of the earlier games and it didn't come into play. It certainly is uh, in this last game of the playoffs. 
What a great call by Joe Labuda on fourth and short on the fake punt. That was the key play in that drive. Now the boot. Tilkey gets into it, and that goes into the end zone. And Ashwabanon will take over on their own 20-yard line. A minute and a half to play in a remarkable first quarter. I've never seen a high school football quarter quite like this one. This is a fun game to for the uh, spectators to see, and obviously the final outcome will uh, uh, will be determined pretty much by the team that uh, is able to continue to put points on the board with each possession as we go through the game. Now it's the Jaguars' turn. There's the draw play to Stecker. He's got some running room. Stecker gets outside to the 30 and to the 35. That's the same play on which he went all the way for 77 yards and a score earlier. Menominee defense does such a good job of uh, reading their keys, and as the uh, with the slight draw play, the linebackers tend to be dropping off, and uh, the wide receivers going down and, and stock blocking and picking up the uh, defenders. They pick up a nice game. Stecker gains 16 yards. Now Borowitz to throw on the run. It is incomplete. John May, the intended receiver. Ryan Kirchmar, another receiver in the area. And Borowitz has a heck of an arm. This is a, a fine athlete. They tell me that in basketball, he's a great three-point shooter. In fact, he is being recruited by the University of Wisconsin at Green Bay to play college basketball. Second Nominee and 10. <laughs> Stecker well over 100 yards in the first quarter. Stecker again, big hole. Stecker close to a first down. Mike Morrow made the tackle. The Menominee Indians changing up their fronts and uh, changing the uh, coverages trying to hide the coverage that they're using. Uh, however, uh, it seems that uh, Stecker continues to be able to run pretty well with the uh, wide, wide defense that uh, Menominee is forced to use because of the wide formations. They execute that uh, delay handoff or a draw, if you will, about as well as you could. Well, the, the, the draw is a, it's like a, a change of pace in baseball. Uh, you're looking for one thing and they come with something else and with, a, with the speed that Stecker has, he's running past people. In addition to that, it allows the, uh, the blockers to be able to angle block, trap block, cross block. It's 21 to 14. Menominee in white leading Ashwabanon in green. First quarter of the game. Stecker off left tackle. Stecker inside Indian territory wrestled down at the 46 yard line but every play he is gaining six seven and eight yards Brian Tkachik the senior linebacker made the tackle he's a good one it's interesting that uh, Ashwabanan is keeping the ball on the ground because when you go to the air and you score quickly uh, you don't take much time off the clock That's the end of an unbelievable quarter of high school football. At the end of one in the Division II state title game, the score, Menominee 21, Ashwabanon 14. Saturday at 12.30, you can watch the WIAA Division I title game between Arrowhead and Appleton. That's the Warhawks against the Terrors. Saturday at 12.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. 
along with Milwaukee South football high school coach Bill Bartholomew. It's Pat Hughes here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. The Division II title game in the WIAA for 1993. And what an unbelievable first quarter. 21 to 14, Menominee leading Ashwaubenon. Ashwaubenon starts the second quarter on the 45 yard line of the Indians. And they have second and one. Neither team has suffered a turnover so far. Neither defense has been able to slow down the other side, Bill. That seems to be uh, the uh, Eshwabanon having the ball at the present time. If they're to, to maintain uh, balance with the Indians, they've got to continue to move the football. Second and one. Inside handoff to Kirchmar. Kirchmar has the first down. Mike Morrow trips him up. You know the running backs are getting a lot of yards when most of the tackles are by the secondary people. First and 10, Ash Wabanon at the 40-yard line. And you've got a... Each team on a pace to gain about 600 yards in the game. Borowitz, the quarterback, to throw. Borowitz will scramble. He's got lots of running room. Borowitz to the 25, to the 20. And a flag is down as Borowitz gets pulled down at the 14-yard line. A 26-yard scramble, but there will be a penalty against the offense. A clipping call against Eshwabanon. Nothing's open, then Borowitz put, brings the ball down and heads up field. We don't see the clip. But Ryan Borowitz uh, Well, the, the bottom line, it's still first and 10 because the clip came downfield, 10 yards downfield. First and 10, Ashwabanon at the 40-yard line. Draw play to Stecker. Stecker incredibly got away. He is still on his feet. Can you believe that? He gained nine yards when he really should have been dropped for a loss. No one can get a good piece of him. He is just so elusive. This is a great piece of running. He's spinning, his feet continue to churn. He ducks under, he twists. Stecker is 5'10", 175 pounds. He appears to be slender, but he is obviously a lot stronger than you might think. Inside handoff to Kirchmar. Kirchmar buried at the 32. That will not be a first down. For one of the few times tonight, the defense rises up to make a big play. Jamie Spielman made the tackle. And a good play it was. Third and Inside two. Inside counter trap. However, the linebackers were coming and uh, were able to penetrate to stop the play actually for a loss. Loss of one. Ashwabanon with the ball, trailing by seven early in the second quarter. Borowitz on third and two to Stecker. He's got a first down. He's got maybe a touchdown. Yes, another touchdown for Stecker. His third of the game. A 32-yard gallop. This is amazing. It's a delay, slight delay play. Takes it off the guard. Eludes two tacklers. Taking it into the end zone. Now Borowitz to convert. 
The kick is up. The kick is right there. It's 21 to 21 with 10.05 to play in the second quarter. Stecker breaking a lot of tackles. He's got good running speed. And he is having a whale of a first half. Pat, in the many years that I've observed uh, high school football, I don't think I've ever seen two backs as good as these two youngsters uh, on, op on opposing teams having this kind of an evening, and particularly in a state championship game. And we have this a is long great way to high go, school Bill. football. Heck, we're early in the second quarter. We have a long way to go. Well, the Badger basketball team will be taking on the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers. The action is coming up tonight at 10.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. The Badgers and the Panthers. Our spotter, Steve Bapti, points out that in championship games, as far as records are concerned, the most rushing yards in a state final game the record is Mark Toshkowski of D.C. Everest back in 1983. He ran for 245 yards. We might have two guys in one game do better than that. Stecker is close to 150 yards by himself already. Twenty-one to twenty-one. Ten minutes to play, second quarter. Morowitz boots. Morrow. Morrow to the 25. Morrow gives Menominee a first and ten at the 25. He also gives the club a nice one-two punch with Adam Roach. His quickness, uh, his ability to uh, change directions also uh, allows uh, Menominee to have uh, a second back to be able to gain some uh, very, very valuable yards. Adam Roach quickly hitting the hole. Roach gaining eight yards. Ryan Kirchmar made the tackle. Power eye pitch uh, with lead backers. The touchdown information from a moment ago. Well, that Adam Roach just attacks the line of scrimmage. And again, follows his blockers and, and cuts extremely well. Second down and two. Roach again. This time, Saha bear hugs him. And it'll be third and about a yard. Nine minutes to play. Second quarter, the game tied 21 apiece. Pretty good crowd on hand. The conditions are absolutely ideal for a championship game in Wisconsin. Roach off left tackle. Roach for a first down to the 38-yard line. Kirchmar spins him off his feet. But Adam Roach with a first down. Nice crowd on hand across the way from Ashwabanon, which is located near Green Bay. Menominee, on the other hand, is located on the western side of the state, near Minnesota. Here's Roach. Roach picking up seven yards to the 45-yard line. Casey Kesnick made the tackle. And it's second and three, Bill. Again, with that pitch, Roach does such a good job of being able to cut back against the green and lead up field with his uh, tremendous power. Uh, again, first down, uh, first down six yards, 
Seven yards, second and three. Roach with 83 yards rushing so far. And time is being delayed. We have an equipment problem on one of the offensive linemen. John McCain, I believe it is. Now he's ready. And so are the Indians. The game tied at 21. Roach outside left. Roach still on his feet for a first down across midfield. John May made the tackle, but that's another Menominee first down. Roach uh, hits, the, hits the hole so quickly and so hard, it's difficult for the defenders to come over and be able to get a solid hit on him. And therefore, therefore he's upfield picking up uh, six and seven yards at a crack. Timeout is called, that's the first one of the half. Time called by the Menominee Indians. And I'm, I think uh, maybe Joe Labuda just uh, wanted to give Adam Roach a little bit of a breather. And it looks like they are uh, repairing some of his equipment as well. What a first half, 21 all in the Division II state championship game between Menominee and Ashwaubenon. And we certainly hope you are enjoying tonight's telecast. If you are, please give us a call at 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1158. We'd love to hear your comments about Wisconsin Public Television. Twenty-one, twenty-one. You know, I talked to Joe Labuda right there on the telephone on uh, Tuesday of this past week. We are taping the game on a Saturday night. And in talking to Joe, he uh, was lamenting the fact that he had lost two of his key kids. He had lost Kevin Path and Bill Engler, and he also wasn't sure whether Adam Roach would be able to play. And, you know, in talking to Joe, I, I got the feeling that, uh, in fact, to use his quote, he said, I'm just worried that we get, we're going to get blown out in the championship game. Well, that has not happened. Adam Roach is very healthy. Here's Mike Morrow. Morrow on the counter gets all the way inside the 40-yard line. Roach took a breather for one play, and he's right back in there again. The tackle by 45 John May on Ashwaubenon's defense. This is a counter to the power back, uh, count, uh, counter trap to the power back, and Morrow does a great job of coming up field and uh, picking up the uh, nine yards on we first a, down. We have a timeout here, Bill. Eric Hermson, fine defensive lineman for the Ashwaubenon Jaguars, is shaken up. 6'4", 255-pound senior. He is part of an Ashwaubenon defense that has intercepted 20 passes and recovered six fumbles. Hermson's a very much of a key member of that defensive front. Uh, if uh, Hermson cannot play, obviously the uh, defense for Ashwaubenon is going to be uh, hurting. Well, you hate to see an injury in any sport at any time, but especially in a high school state championship game like, like this. Eric Hermson is still being looked at on the field. He's right around the 48 or 49 yard line. He's going to be helped to his feet and he's walking off under his own power. And that's a good sign. Eric Hermson. Let's hope it's something very minor and that he will be able to return. It's a 21-21 tie. Seven minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first half. Adam Roach 
exploding to the 30. He might go all the way. He will. It's a touchdown for Menominee. 39 yards. Adam Roach. Josh Feely made a great lead block. This is the power pitch again. Pitch pulls it pulls up inside. Good job of blocking downfield. And he outruns the remainder of the secondary. And now the kick by Brent Miller is up. It is good. 28 to 21, Menominee back into the lead. 6.58 to play in the first half. You could not ask for more action in a championship game. And there will be a lot of action when the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Phoenix takes on the Wisconsin Badger basketball team on December the 8th. It's UW Green Bay against UW December 8th at 10.45 p.m. on Wisconsin Public Television. Twenty-eight to twenty-one, Menominee with the lead, but now they have to kick the ball away. Aaron Stecker waiting on his own five-yard line. The last time they kicked away from Stecker, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they're uh, if they will continue to try to kick to the corner to keep the ball away from Stecker. Both teams, uh, special, both, both of the uh, Ashwaubenon and Menominee have done an outstanding job with their special teams as well. It's that pitch, power play, and he just breaks it against the grain, against the pursuit pattern, and takes it all the way in the end zone. 28 to 21. Just under seven minutes to play in the half. Adam Roach, number 24. What a great, great year he has had. He is well over 2,000 yards for the year, averaging just under nine yards a carry. He gained 101 against Monroe last week. A 39-yard scamper by Adam Roach. The Indians lead by seven. And in a game with this many TDs, Another important thing becomes the extra points and the conversions. Stecker at the 10. Stecker to the 27-yard line. He went right into that uh, wedge fearlessly, didn't he? Yes, he did. He, he runs hard. Uh. Now somebody's shaken up on the Indians. Joe Labuda hustling out to take a look at the kid. Trying to get a number for you. It will be an Ashwabanon ball at their own 28 yard line. It might be Jamie Spielman, number 68. Number six. And Jamie is uh, in some pain right now, being administered to. We're going to watch the play again. Stecker went right into a mass of players at about the 25. And Spielman's going to run off under his own power, so that's a good sign. He may have had a stinger from that hard contact on that uh, tackle. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Slot left. Kirchmar inside Newman. Borowitz to Stecker. Stecker gets outside right. Fumble! It's loose! 
and it's recovered by Menominee, I believe. No, Ashwabanon maintains possession. That was a big play. Pat, that was one of the few times that somebody got a real good hit on him from the backside. Brock Herbst made the recovery, number 75. Stecker tried to spin and he was hit from behind by Chuck Weber. But Ashwabanon maintains possession. Second and seven. Borowitz to throw. Under pressure, down he goes. Jeff Keyes with the sack. Menominee applying the tremendous pressure up front. Uh, their defensive front, which uh, generally is with a four-man rush. It looked like it was one of those quick rhythm passes where you only drop back about three or four steps. Three step, uh, and short. it wasn't open, Bill, and then he was in trouble. Five and a half minutes to play in the half. Borowitz with a deep drop and a long pass. And it's incomplete. May, the intended receiver, Rich Sinker, doing an excellent job of defense. He forced the receiver to run wide as he pinched him toward the sideline. Good job of pass defense. And also, Ryan had to throw the ball before he wanted to. <laughs> For one of the few times tonight, we see a punt, or we will see a punt. Borowitz to boot the ball. Morrow is the deep man. Look at this punt. Oh, what a beauty by Borowitz. Inside the 20, inside the 15-yard line. A 60-yard punt by Ryan Borowitz. You talk about a multi-talented kid. He punts, he kicks, and he's the quarterback. Now Menominee will start the possession on their own 15 with five minutes and 12 seconds to play in the second quarter. Menominee leading 28 to 21. Hermson's back in the game for the uh, Eschwabanon defense. Menominee running the, uh, again, the power pitch play that scored the touchdown the, the, uh, on the last possession. Roach picked up about five yards on first down there, Bill. It's very difficult for the linebackers uh, to come over and get a good, good piece of the running back as he, he hits the hole because he's got blockers leading him through that. Second and five. Roach again. Outside right tackle for three punishing yards. Tim Saha, the 290 pounder, made the initial contact. Chad Van Lennon came up to finish off the play. Third down and three. Rarely will you even see a wide receiver in this Menominee Indian offense. A lot of power formations. Now Morrow the one wide receiver to this side. A reverse. Morrow's got it. Morrow is hit and brought down shy of a first down. Flag on the play. And a penalty marker is down. Brian Morgan made the stop. And the officials are conferring. The penalty appears to be against Menominee and since the yardage was shy of a first down. They will probably decline the penalty and set up a fourth down punting situation. Or do you push them back farther, Bill? That's the decision. Or fourth and less than one, they may elect to uh, take the penalty, force him into a third and long. That's what they're going to do. I thought maybe in a game dominated by offense, Anytime you can force the other team into a fourth down and a punting situation, you might take that 
decision. Last time on fourth and one, they went for it. <laughs> Third and 15 on their own 10. Adam Roach is stopped after about a seven yard gain. And it sets up a fourth and seven. The clock is running. John Otis made the tackle. Three minutes and 15 seconds to play in the second quarter. And the punt will be into the wind. It's not a real stiff breeze, but the wind is strong enough to have an effect. For the second time, we've had each team stop each other, which has not happened a whole lot this evening. The punt by Roach, taken by Stecker at the 40. Stecker still on his feet. What incredible balance. And now, was there a fumble at the end of the play? There was. But Ashwapanon recovers. 42-yard punt by Roach and a seven-yard run back by Aaron Stecker. 28 to 21, Menominee leading, but Ashwabanon with very good field position to start this drive. Stecker again with his outstanding balance and ability to spin and still be able to pick up the yardage. Stecker has the ball to midfield, but that Big hole closed up very quickly. Brian Tkachik and Chuck Weber made the hit. And you're right, Bill, defense is beginning to be more and more of a factor on both sides of the ball. That time, uh, the linebacker came up and uh, was able to get a good shot on Stecker. That, the last time they ran that play, Stecker broke it away from him. In the first quarter, the offenses were gaining yards at will. Borowitz to throw on the run, long pass, downfield, incomplete. Again, good coverage supplied by Utaka Springer. John May was the intended receiver. There was a penalty marker down, but Borowitz threw that ball on the run about 45 yards. The marker, the preliminary indication would be offensive holding. And it will be marched off against the Jaguars. Pat, one of the, th uh, the uh, Menominee Indians are doing a good job in changing up coverages and hiding what they're doing. Uh, I think Borowitz is having a little bit of a difficult time determining exactly, uh, on a, particularly on the passing downs, uh, what kind of coverage is is out there. Second down and 20 to go. A screen pass to Stecker up the middle. Stecker to the 50, to the 40. Stecker could go all the way. He will. Touchdown. 63 yards. Middle screen, Stecker gets some nice blocking, breaks into the clear, and outruns the secondary. He just did get into the corner of that end zone. Ashwabanon appeared to catch the Indians in a blitz that time. And what a great call against a blitz, a screen pass over the middle. 63 yards for the tying touchdown as Borowitz con converts on the extra point and it's 28 to 28. What a great game we are watching. Stecker scores his fourth touchdown in the first half. In Division II, the four TDs is already a state final record. Several players had scored three in a game. Most recently, Brent Moss of the Badgers for Racine Park five years ago. It's 
28 to 28. One minute, 34 seconds to go. Menominee will have an opportunity to come back and see if they can take the lead. In this game, both teams could score again before the end of the half. That's the way it's been. What a great kick by Borowitz. Downed in the end zone by Roach. The game tied at 28. First and 10, Menominee. Stecker with four touchdowns. Roach has scored three for Menominee and passed for the other one. So Roach and Stecker have been involved in every scoring play in the game. Roach blasting off left guard and left tackle for about seven. Menominee coming with that pitch power play again off the left tackle. Time called here, Bill. It's an official timeout. Second down and two. A minute, 19 seconds to play before intermission. Trevor Tilke to Mike Morrow. Morrow cutting back against the grain. Might have a first down, I think he does as he got across the 30-yard line, and it's a first down Menominee. Brian Beaumier made the tackle. A two-play drive. Stecker going all the way on the screen play. One minute remaining in the half. Now the flag is down. Either. Illegal procedure will be the call, I believe, against Menominee. Encroachment. I think uh, there was encroachment before the uh, offensive lineman moved. First and five. 57 seconds to play in the half. The Menominee Indians, the champions of the Big Rivers Conference. A 28-28 tie. Tilke downfield. It's intercepted on the play by Ryan Kirchmar. But a penalty flag is down. Let's wait to see what the penalty is all about. Forty four seconds remaining in the half. The penalty is against Menominee and it will be declined by Ashwabanon. Play action. Hermson does a really good job of rushing the passer, forcing him to throw ahead of time. Give Hermson credit for the forced interception. First and 10 on their own 41 yard line. 44 seconds to play. From the shotgun, Borowitz. Throwing out to the right. He's got the receiver, that is Pete Newman. Big tight end makes his 18th catch of the year. <laughs> 36 seconds to play in the half. Second down and three. Timeout has been called by the Menominee defense. Pat, with uh, with Eschwabanon having the kicker in, in Borowitz, uh, they could uh, get inside uh, into the red zone and, and still be able to come away with a field goal. So they have a, actually have a, a triple threat coming in. They can kick for the points, pass for the points, or give the ball to Secker and run for the points. Menominee with only one timeout. Now Ashwabanon on offense, they have all three of their timeouts to use if they so choose. You know, talking about Borowitz though and his range, uh, I, I would think that he could boot a field goal uh, of 40 yards possibly. I believe that he has uh, one or two over 40 yards during the course of the season. 
That's rare in high school football to say the least. Anything over 30 35 yards is noteworthy in the high school game. 28 to 28 tie. 36 seconds to play in the first half. What do you want to bet that Aaron Stecker will get his hand on the football in some way between now and the end of the half? I think that's a good bet, Pat. He's the lone running back. Here's a double pass play from May, but it's almost intercepted. The old double pass where the receiver steps back behind the line of scrimmage. May then trying to make a double pass to Pete Newman, but the ball was almost picked off. That's a very creative play, however. Double pass, however, uh, Menominee's in man coverage and uh, almost intercepted. May was shaken up. He was hit hard as he let go of the pass. And May is in pain on the far side right now. Here's the play again. It appeared to be Brian Tkachik that came in and uh, and hit May up high. It looked like a, a perfectly legal hit. Looks like he uh, may have had the wind knocked out of him. 31 seconds to play in the half. A 28 to 28 tie between Ashwabanon and Menominee. Well, what, what kinds of things are going to be discussed at halftime in the locker rooms, Bill? That'll be interesting because offensively, I think they just continue to do what they're doing. Defensively, it's how do you stop Aaron? Uh, how do you stop uh, Stecker? How do you stop uh, Roach? I mean, it's uh, these are amazing athletes. Uh, the coaches have done such a great job in building their offense around these two individuals. Uh, making defensive uh, adjustments, uh, possibly with your linebackers. Uh, right now, uh, the Ashwaubenon linebackers are having a very difficult time getting uh, a good tackle put on uh, Roach as he comes up on that power pitch play. They have not stopped that power pitch play yet. John May now walks off the field, feeling a bit groggy on the far side. Well, halftime coming up, he'll be able to rest for several moments then. 31 seconds to play in the half. Borowitz to Stecker. Stecker is drilled by Weber. And timeout is called by Ash Wabanon. That play was third and two. And now it will be fourth down and five. Well, what do you do if you're Ash Wabanon here? Do you go for it? and risk giving a good field position to Menominee or do you punt the ball away and play it safely? Or do you, gonna punt the football. Or do you fake the punt? Your quarterback is the guy that does the kicking. So keep that in mind. You've got 26 seconds to play in the half. Coach, Coach Labuda is out there right now giving directions Obviously, in their scouting report, they will know this is a, a great field position to be able to uh, try that fake uh, with that little time on the clock. It'll be important for Menominee to make sure they cover all eligible receivers in the uh, punt formation. Stecker is the up back, and the quarterback, Borowitz, is in punting formation. Will he punt the ball? Yeah, he will. And nobody is back from Menominee. They weren't sure that he'd punt. The ball bouncing and hits the official in the head at the 11-yard line. Well, he knows that <laughs> punt returning is a dangerous business. A 42-yard punt. 16 seconds to play. Boro, it's an uh, excellent punt. Probably would have gone into the end zone. Embarrassing moments.
Our people in the truck seem to get a kick out of that official <laughs> getting drilled in the head. That'll be the end of the half right there. 14 seconds to play. Each team will go into the locker room and catch their breath at halftime. A remarkable two quarters of play in the Division II title game. At the end of 24 minutes, the Menominee Indians 28, the Ashwaubenon Jaguars 28. The 1993 WIAA High School Football Championships are made possible in part by a grant from the Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association. WCHA rival Northern Michigan invades the Great Dane as the... We're ready to go for the second half of the Division II state final between Ashwaubenon and Menominee. Ashnaba Ashwaubenon will kick off. We do have a couple of highlights from the first half. Adam Roach, number 24, scoring for Menominee. Roach had three touchdowns on the ground, and he also passed for a touchdown in the first half. Aaron Stecker scored four times. That's a new Division II state final championship game record. This is that remarkable 63-yard screen pass and run for his fourth score of the half, Aaron Stecker of Ashwaubenon. That, by the way, is the longest passing play in Division II championship game history. So, Bill, what kind of a second half are you looking for? More of the same, or do you think the teams will play a bit more conservatively? I think the I think the play will will settle down a little bit. I don't look for the score the scoring to be as high. However, uh, the uh, the the defenses will become a little bit more adjusted and and probably take take hold a little bit more. Look at the remarkable halves of Roach and Stucker as we start the second half. This is Adam Roach to the near side. To the 22 yard line, dragged down on the play by Brian Bomir. Bomir made the stop. First and 10 Menominee on their own 24. The first four times they had the ball, Menominee scored. The last three times, they failed to get it in. 28 to 28. Pat, I think a, a very important part uh, of the Ashwaubenon defense is to play field position and force uh, Menominee to, to play, run the ball the entire 80 yards and not give them the big play. Chad Van Lennon of the Jaguars made the tackle on Adam Roach. Roach appears a little bit shaken up after that play. That would be a devastating loss for this Menominee Indian Club. Roach on the pitch. Roach still has not moved very much on the far side. He did gain three yards on that play. It'll set up a second and seven. We're going to take another look at that play, Bill. Let's uh, let's see what happened. It's a power sweep. Uh, there's a gang tackle that takes place. Again, Adam Roach was very sick with the flu earlier this week. And the Indians are playing without two of their key players, Kevin Path, a linebacker and a fullback, and Bill Engler, a wide receiver and a defensive back, two of the very best players they had. Engler out with a knee injury that required surgery. And Kevin Path out with about about with mononucleosis. They were wondering whether Trevor Tilkey would be able to play this week. He had a uh, suffered an elbow injury in the game against Monroe last Saturday, but he has played the distance. But right now, the big question mark is whether Adam Roach will be able to return.
First half minute of quarter number three here at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. Adam Roach had the uh, had the flu and, and part of the uh, stream that uh, tends to be going around. Possibly he will not have that energy level either as the game progresses. 28-28, a combined total of 56 points. So the old record of 62 established four years ago in the game between Marinette and New Berlin Eisenhower when Marinette won at 43 to 19. They had 62 points that day. That's another record that will fall. And still we are waiting for Adam Roach to get up on the far side. He is the main man for Menominee. Well folks if you are enjoying this game we'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments at all about Wisconsin Public Television sports coverage just phone this number 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253. 253-1158. And uh, let us know what you think about Wisconsin public television sports coverage. Well, you wonder if Roach is unable to continue as we watch the play one more time. Let's see if we can tell what happens. Number 55 for Ashwabanon is big Brian Bomir. And Bomir landed on him. And now Roach getting to his feet. He's walking all right. I don't think it's a lower leg injury. The way he is walking. His ankles and his knees look fine, Bill. And that would certainly seem to be good news for Menominee. He may have a shoulder uh, the way he was lying when uh, the piling started on top of him. So now Menominee will play offense without their top gun, Adam Roach. Second and seven, but they still have a good running back in Mike Morrow. Utaka Springer has come in to take the place of Adam Roach. This is Springer right here. Springer gets a couple out to the 29 where he is bottled up by Brian Morgan and James McNeil. Coach Labuda staying with his game plan, uh, the power pitch play again for four yards. Roach is on the sideline, still being looked at. We're not gonna speculate on the nature of the injury. He is trying to do some stretching exercises to get ready to go back in. We'll see. Now Tilkey to throw on third down. A penalty flag is down. Tilkey scrambles near the 33 yard line. Eric Hermsen made the tackle and it's a penalty against Menominee. Holding is the preliminary call. It's a play action off the fake pitch. Tilkey decides to take the ball upfield. Receivers are covered. Holding call. Now it's third and very long. It'll be third and 19. That scramble was shy of the first down. It would have been fourth, but Ashwabanon on a little bit of a gamble, deciding to take the penalty and force third and 19. From the 15-yard line, Trevor Tilkey. To Utaka Springer. Springer busting out to the 24, but that's shy of a first down. Jeremy Kreischer, one of the inside linebackers, made the tackle. Counter trade uh, back to the uh, weak side out of the power eye. Uh, nice pickup of about eight yards. However, fourth and ten. Now the punt forthcoming. Tilkey to boot the ball away. Check it. That is uh, Keith Miller to punt the ball. 
Miller to Stecker at the 45. Stecker to the 45 of Menominee. Great field position for Ashwabanon. 31-yard punt, a 12-yard return. Ashwabanon in the first half scored on four of their seven possessions. Up to this point, field position has not been extremely important. Uh, as we get into the second half, Ashwabanon now does have good field position, 44 yards to go. Stecker, the handoff, and he gets about two very difficult yards down to the 42-yard line. Brent Pember made the tackle for Menominee. Adam Roach is uh, bouncing around a little bit on the sideline. It would appear that he is going to go back into the game. It's second and eight. A 28-28 tie with nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Now Borowitz will keep it himself. Borowitz to the 35. Close to a first down. Chuck Weber made the tackle. It'll be third and one. Pete Newman with a good block on the play. There's Newman's block that sprung Borowitz. And the quarterback came up a yard short. It's third and one. Interestingly, that time they used Stecker as a uh, as a decoy. Stecker went opposite, pulling the linebacker away, allowing Borowitz to come up with the option play for the uh, long gainer. Stecker up the middle. He's got the first down. Aaron Stecker got two yards before Brian Tkachuk drove him backward. But that's a first down. Stecker had 180 yards rushing in the first half. First and 10, Ashwabanon. Ashwabanon's only loss was to Marinette, 28 to 19 in the second week of the year, a loss which they avenged in the second round of the playoffs by defeating Marinette, 38 to 27. From the 32, Borowitz to May. John May, fumble! It's loose, recovered by the Indians. Mike Morrow has it. First and 10, Menominee. One of the few times that uh, Borowitz goes to his wide receiver Nice reception, ball stripped. Rich Sinker stripped him of the ball and then Morrow recovered. Roach is in the game. Play action, Tilke to Morrow and Morrow still on his feet all the way up to the 40 yard line. A 16 yard gain, things looked Rather bleak from Menominee a moment ago, but the fumble and the return to the lineup of Roach have rejuvenated the Indians. Turnover has, uh, again, put Menominee in the field position. Uh, one more first down, and they're into uh, Eshwabanon territory. First and 10 on the 39. Adam Roach, outside left, nothing there. The game is tied 28 to 28. Bo Mir made the tackle. Morgan had a piece of the action as well. Second and nine here, Bill. The defenses have tightened down. It looks like uh, Menominee will probably come out and throw the ball a little bit more. They've already displayed that in the, uh, this series. Adam Roach off right tackle. Up near midfield. Boy, you've got to like the way he attacks the line of scrimmage. He just blasts into the hole, doesn't he? A good way of putting it, and, and uh, 
mentioned earlier, the linebackers and uh, defensive linemen are not even getting a shot at him because he hits it so quickly. Third and less than a yard from their own 48. Menominee tied with Ashwabanon, 28 apiece. Roach has the first down with a second effort. That's where 195 pounds come into play right there. Menominee continues with their power football uh, where they had uh, punted and given up field position. The turnover uh, by Ashwabanon has given them the ball now uh, at the 50 yard line. Now they have regained field position. Hermson hit Roach behind the line, but Roach fell forward for the first down. Now Tilke, he's gonna throw long. He does! He's got his man all the way. Travis Lenz for a touchdown. What a beautifully thrown ball by Trevor Tilke it's to excellent Travis Lenz. Fake pitch. Throwing to the tight end, going downfield, freezing the defensive secondary of Eshwabanon, giving him a time to get behind in the, the touchdown. Nice pass by Fielke. Anomaly's on the board again. Now the extra point try by Brent Miller. It's low, but it's high enough, and it's good. 5.37 to play, third quarter. And the scoreboard showing Menominee leading Ashwabanon by a score of 35 to 28. Folks, a reminder, Badger basketball is coming up. Michael Finley, who is a, a definite All-America candidate for Wisconsin this year. Tracy Webster and some Outstanding young freshman, Jaleel Roberts, Rashard Griffith. Anyway, they take on UWM, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers in the Badgers' home opener. Don't miss the action. Milwaukee against Wisconsin. 10.30 p.m. Saturday night on Wisconsin Public Television. Pat Menominee took that turnover and turned it into a touchdown, uh, driving the ball uh, about 70 yards. That's the mark of a good football team. Eight plays ago, it didn't look too good for Menominee. Sure didn't. Nice play action by Tilke a minute ago. And if you're a defensive player, you've got to be keying on Adam Roach. And that opens up some of the other guys. Boy, what a well-thrown pass by Tilke. Tilke with his 15th touchdown pass of the season. And he's only passed the ball about 65 times. Tilke played hurt against Monroe a week ago and was only four out of 13. But he looks healthy right now. It's a new scoring record in Division II, eclipsing the old mark that we talked about earlier back in 1989. And I have a feeling that there are going to be a lot more points scored before this one is over. 35 to 28, Menominee leading Ashwabanon. That ball is out of the end zone. Good strong kick by Trevor Tilke. Now it's Ashwabanon's turn. Aaron Stecker and Brian, or rather Ryan Borowitz, the quarterback. In the first half, uh, Pat, there were very few mistakes. Uh, the fumble <clears throat> after the pass reception really has been the first uh, offensive mistake. Let's see if Ashwabanon can come back and mount the drive. This is Stecker outside left. He is run out of bounds by Weber and Pat.
September. A gain of about five for Aaron Stecker. Stecker, last week against Sussex Hamilton, had 190 yards and four touchdowns. Two weeks ago, he had 230 against Marinette. He said several 200 plus yards rushing games this year. Stecker up to 190 yards here tonight. Second and five. This is Borowitz on a keeper up the middle, and he's got a first down. Chuck Weber brought him down, but Borowitz right up the middle for seven yards and a Jaguar first down. What they've done is taken the, uh, actually the nose guard and brought him off as a linebacker, and he pretty much is a spy or playing man-to-man -man on, on uh, Aaron St uh, on Stecker. First and 10 from the 33. Borowitz from the shotgun. He's ready to pass. A screen. This time, Mike Morrow comes up and makes a big play. That's the same play on which they scored a TD in the first half. But this time, Morrow snuffs it out. I'll tell you that Morrow has made almost as many big plays as Roach and Stecker here tonight. Second and ten. Four and a half minutes to play, third quarter. Borowitz dragged down by Weber. A gain of two. And it sets down, a, sets up a third down and eight. You know, it's interesting, Menominee last week, Bill, played in a six to three game. You talk about a <laughs> contrast. Last week, nobody could score, and tonight, must be the turf. A 35 to 28 score. Horowitz back, looking. He's got his man for a first down. May, John May made the catch. Boy, Borowitz, you could tell that May was not the primary receiver. That was his second or third choice. Borowitz does a nice job looking left and coming right to May. May makes the reception and the first down. Borowitz, the six foot senior, having a big night. Borowitz back, draw play, Stecker. Not much room, and Stecker gets away remarkably and gets some yardage out of the play, but there is a penalty marker down. You talk about an elusive runner. Several times tonight, I've thought that he would be caught for a loss, Bill, only to have Stecker break away and turn something negative into a positive. His legs continue to churn. He never stops moving. He s slides sideways, ducks under, twists, turns. <laughs> I to get a piece of him. Face mess, yeah. First and 10 after the penalty on the 35-yard line of Menominee. Ashwabanon driving. Menominee in a, by seven. Menominee in a 43 invert defense now, assigning. Stecker down to the 30-yard line. Tkachik made the tackle, Bill. Go ahead. Menominee has taken their two safeties that were playing deep and brought them up now, so they're basically uh, almost have a nine-man front uh, with man-to-man -man coverage out on the wideout, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not they uh, try to get the ball to their wideouts. Second down and six on the 30-yard line. Borowitz to pass. He's got another completion to John May. 
Good timing on the pattern. As soon as May turned around, the ball was right there. It's a first and 10 Ash Wabanon on the 17 yard line. Borowitz goes to the wideouts because basically they've got one-on-one uh, -on -one coverage out there. Nice job of protection. May for the reception. First and 10 on the 17. Stecker gets away. Unbelievable job by Aaron Stecker. A 12 yard gain, Bill. I'm glad it's not my job to try to bring him down. Stecker does this on his own. Cuts back, twists, turns, breaks two tackles, a third tackle, finally brought down. Final two minutes, third quarter. Coach Labuda, uh, by bringing in his safeties now, has really uh, uh, done a good job of defending Stecker, but uh, it's really difficult uh, to hold down with his elusive running. Stecker up to the 210 yard mark. Stecker this time bottled up for no yardage. John McCain made part of the tackle. Josh Rogers also had part of the stop. 35-28, Menominee leading. Ashwabanon driving for a possible tying score. Second and goal. Borowitz with three running backs this time. The second man through, but a fumble on the play, and it's recovered by Menominee. Corey Van Ness was the running back that fumbled the ball, and Jeff Keyes recovered. And it's a fumble recovery in the end zone, so a touchback, bring it out to the 20-yard line. Faked inside, brought it outside, and uh, fumble at the two-yard line in the end zone, and Menominee recovers. Check it. That was Ryan Kirchmar, number 25, that fumbled the ball, and Jeff Keyes recovered in the end zone. First and 10. Adam Roach, nothing there. Final minute, third quarter. Ryan Morgan from the secondary, came up to make the tackle. Jeremy Kreischer had a piece of the tackle as well. Turnovers. Ashwabanon now has suffered two. That one really may come back to haunt them because they were so close to scoring the tying touchdown. You only get so many opportunities and... Uh... Now Roach in motion. <laughs> The ball goes to Morrow, and he is stopped. And that will wrap up the third quarter of play here at Camp Randall. As the clock winds down, at the end of three, the scoreboard shows in the Division II state final, it's Menominee 35, Ashwabanon 28. Pat. Next weekend, Jeff Sauer's Badger hockey team <laughs> takes on Rick Comley's Northern Michigan Wildcats in a matchup of the 1990 and 1991 NCAA champions. It's the Badgers' last home series of 93, and you won't miss a goal if you watch Wisconsin against Northern Michigan right here on Wisconsin Public Television next Friday and Saturday. It's Pat Hughes along with Bill Bartholomew here from Camp Randall in Madison. Final quarter, Division II, state championship game, and what a game it's been. 35 to 28, Menominee in white, leading Ashwabanon in green. 
Now we've talked about the state capitol. There it is. Pat, as we go into this last quarter, and uh, Menominee's facing a third and long, third and nine, actually. Uh, this becomes an important series from, for a Schwabenon. If they can force them to punt in this given situation, they can still come back with good field position. Menominee, on the other hand, would like to mount a drive and eat the clock up as they go 80 yards. Third down and nine. The quarterback, Trevor Tilke, back to throw. It's a screen. This ball will be thrown away. Probably a very smart play by Trevor Tilke. Brian Bomir was rushing. I think he wanted to set up the screen, but when he saw there was a lot of green shirts in the area, he wisely threw the ball away on purpose. Eshwabanan uh, did an excellent job of diagnosing the screen and, and covering the flat, actually both flats, and Filke threw the ball away. Eshwabanan now has an opportunity to, uh, to get good field position. Adam Roach punts it away, a beautiful punt. Stecker back to his own 36. Stecker is hit and down he goes at the 40 yard line. 43 yard punt, five yard return. First and 10, Ashwabanon. 11 minutes and 43 seconds to play. Ashwabanon with an impressive drive on their last series, but a fumble by Ryan Kirchmar into the end zone, stalled the drive. This is Stecker on the delay. Stecker across the 45 to the 47 yard line. Ryan Takachik made the tackle. Now that was a counter tray where uh, it's made to look, uh, if it's going one way and they counter back, but they're pulling both guards, a guard and tackle, kicking out and leading up this may be uh, a series that we uh, will see more as we go on. It's a, more of a power type of football rather than allowing Stecker, Stecker just to be uh, running on his own. Second and four, Horowitz to throw. Oh, what a great catch by Craig Glish. A one-handed grab. Super catch by Craig Glish. A 23-yard play to the 30-yard line. Eshwabanan comes out. A five-step drop pass. Beautiful reception here. One hand brings it in for the reception. First and 10 on the 30-yard line. Sterling Beautiful Sharp. job of leading the, the receiver by Borowitz. Sterling Sharp never did it any better. First and 10 on the 30. There's a draw play again to Stecker. Stecker gets down to the 26 yard line. That's a gain of four before Chuck Weber brought him down. Second and six. It's every time he puts his hands on the ball, you're almost looking <laughs> to see what phenomenal running he's gonna do again. Look at the yards piled up by Stecker and Roach tonight. Remarkable. But Ashwabanon trails by seven. That's the key number right now. Borowitz pass might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. It falls incomplete, and it's third and seven. But you're in, you're in four down territory right here, I believe. This block at the line of scrimmage uh, caused uh, Borowitz to have to throw the ball before he wanted to. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't picked off. Three wide receivers to the near side. Stecker pitches, or uh, Borowitz pitches it to Stecker. Stecker has the first down inside the 20 yard line. He almost broke that one for a score. First and 10, Ashwabana. 
Eshwabanan runs to the weak side, the side away from the, th from the three receivers with a uh, lead option, Stecker optioning, pitching the ball to Stecker. First and 10, the Ashwabanon Jaguars down by seven. They have not scored in the second half. Ashwabanon with their 17th first down. Stecker gets to the 16 yard line. It's second down. A gain of about three. Morrow made the tackle. Nine and a half minutes to play in the game. Ashwabanon is taking uh, and setting up trips away from to the wide side of the field, forcing Menominee to bring their defensive uh, coverage, which is pretty much man to man, uh, and allow a Stecker to run a little bit more free to the weak side away from. Borowitz on a keeper gets down to the 12. Mike Morrow trips him up, and it sets up a third down. Well, if you're Ashwabanon, you feel like you've got to score on this possession. They are on the 12-yard line. It's third and three. They had that great drive at the end of the third quarter, which resulted in the fumble in the end zone. So really, they've got to feel like this is a must-score possession. Third and three. Borowitz. To Glish, broken up on the play by Utaka Springer. And it's fourth down. Excellent job of defense by Springer that time, coming in and uh, not allowing that inside post pattern. Quick post. Springer does a great job coming to the ball, knocking it down for the incompletion. This will be a 29-yard field goal attempt by Ryan Borowitz. He is more than capable of scoring from this distance. Snapped and spotted, kicked on the way, and good. So Ken Golomsky, the head coach for Ashwabanon, figures that to win the game, I'm going to need a touchdown and either a two-point conversion or a field goal anyway. Why not go ahead and get the field goal now and then try to get the ball back and score the the touchdown later on. That's good solid strategy by Golomsky. It's a 35 to 31 game on Borowitz 19 yard, uh, make it a 29 yard field goal with eight minutes and eight seconds to play in the game. Bill? In-state rival UW Green Bay flies into the field house on December 8th to take on Stu Jackson's Badger basketball team. Phoenix head coach Dick Bennett has four returning starters from last season. And you can watch Michael Finley, Tracy Webster, and Super Frosh Richard Griffith take on this veteran Phoenix team right here on Wisconsin Public Television. It's UW Green Bay versus Wisconsin, December 8th at 10.45 p.m. on Wisconsin Public Television. Morrow, Springer, and Roach are deep as Borowitz, who is a very impressive kicker. That field goal was good with plenty to spare a moment ago, and uh, he has been flawless on his extra point kicks in tonight's game, four of them. And now he'll kick off to the Menominee Indians. Adam Roach, the main man, is, about, is at about the seven-yard line. 35 to 31 Menominee in a memorable Division II championship game. Menominee with eight men up close. They're not sure that Morowitz won't try to onside this one, but I think it's a bit early in the game for that. I think he wants to boot it downfield. Yes, he does. Morrow at the eight-yard line. Morrow to the 20. Morrow to the 30. 
Morrow to the 50. Morrow to the 40. The 20. The 10. He goes all the way for a touchdown. 92 yards. Mike Morrow with a 92-yard kickoff return. Menominee sets a wall along the sideline. A great job on the special teams again, setting the, allowing Morrow to, to run free. Safety misses him. 92-yard touchdown for Morrow. Miller with the extra point try. Snapped and spotted, kicked, good. Mike Morrow has made a lot of big plays tonight. A fumble recovery, he's had a lot of key runs. He caught a touchdown in the first half, and now a 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And to this point, that's the biggest play in this game. It gives Menominee a 42 to 31 lead. And this is the first time that either team has led by more than seven points. Folks, give us a call if you are enjoying this game. Call this number 1-800-253-1158. That's 1-800-253-1158. I would have to believe we're going to get some phone calls from people in Menominee and uh, Ashwabanon after this thriller here tonight. That kickoff return shatters the old record. The old mark had been only a 35-yarder. So a 90-yard, make it a 92-yard kickoff return for a score by Mike Morrow. That we get back to special teams, and that, that's one thing that, that Menominee has displayed uh, this evening is all parts of their special teams have been exceptional. Kickoff returns, punt returns. Yeah. Fake punt. The big fake punt, absolutely. That was a big play. 42 to 31. Stecker at the 10. Stecker with some open field to the 30, to the 40. An amazing return by Aaron Stecker to the 48 yard line. A 40 yard return. Boy, this game is full of surprises tonight. Stecker brought it up to the left side, up the left hash mark. Everyone closed in on him. He broke it back to the outside. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to play in the game. There is the field goal a few moments ago. Now the kickoff return by Morrow. You can see the, uh, see the blockers forming to the inside, the wall being formed as the... Uh, Morowitz is tackled behind the line, Bill, as we are watching the live action now. Second and 13, a sack by Weber on the play. Weber tackling Borowitz. A three yard loss, second and 13. Ashwabanon trailing by 11. Less than seven minutes to play. Borowitz to throw. Incomplete. And it's third and 13. Rory Stein with a good pass rush. Stecker, look at that. In receiving and rushing and returning punts and kickoffs, 437 yards here tonight. We get into the last seven minutes of the game, that physical nature of Menominee Looks like it's taking over at the line of scrimmage. Here's a pass upfield. 
and intercepted on the play by Aaron Larson. Larson back to midfield, and Menominee with the ball and an 11-point lead. Aaron Larson picking it off. That ball floated on Borowitz a little bit. Borowitz uh, actually laid the ball out for the receiver and had put a little bit too much under it. Uh, free safety came over. They were in a cover one with a free safety, man-to-man -man with a free safety. Free safety came over and picked it off. Nice job. Now Menominee in the driver's seat temporarily. Adam Roach blasting for about six yards. Make it, make it more like nine yards. What a second effort by Adam Roach. A gain of nine. It'll be second and one. And the clock continues to run. 6-10 to play in the game. Menominee leading by 11. Adam Roach outside left. Hammered down by John May. May shoving Roach to the turf, but he stayed in bounds. And that is significant here because the clock continues to run. Five minutes and 35 seconds to play. Third and one. This is a big play right here. Tilke. Tomorrow coming around. Morrow has the first down. He's to the 30, the 20, the 15, and brought down at the 13-yard line. A 27-yard run by Mike Morrow. It's a great call on third and one. Uh, fakes a power play and handoff tomorrow with a nice lead block by the by the uh, lineman all the way down to the 15 yard line five minutes to play Menominee leading by 11 with the ball Adam Roach great defensive play by Brian Morgan Morgan would not let Roach get outside under five minutes to play. Now, if you're Menominee, you want to take as much time as you can and keep the ball on the ground and keep it in bounds. This is a great effort by Morgan to come over and uh, be able to pull down Roach from an angle. Not too many players have been able to do that tonight. Off right tackle, Roach with a minimal gain. Tim Saha was there to stop the progress of the running back. It's third down and nine. However, only four minutes and 10 seconds to play in the game. And Menominee leading by 11. Quarterback Trevor Tilke. There's that reverse handoff to Morrow. Morrow down to about the seven, short of a first down. Ryan Kirchmar stopping Morrow. It's fourth down and three. You lead by 11. Do you kick a field goal and try to go up by 14, or do you try for the first down on fourth and two? Inside counter again, inside counter trap. Coach Labuda on third and long or a long yardage situation likes to come with that inside counter. Fourth and two, a long two. Timeout called by Trevor Tilke. That's a good smart timeout call by your senior quarterback there. It's a key play. He wanted to make sure that that everyone on the offense knew exactly what his assignment was. And it just seemed like a very appropriate time to call a timeout. 
he may be may have attempted to try to pull Ashwabanan off uh, to encroach. Ashwabanan held, and he called a timeout. Well, during the timeout, let us remind you that Saturday at 12.30 p.m., you can watch the WIAA Division I championship game between the Arrowhead Warhawks and the Appleton West Terrors. That's Arrowhead against Appleton. Appleton West in the Division I championship Saturday at 12.30 on Wisconsin Public Television. Morrow has joined his teammate Roach in surpassing the 100-yard mark in rushing. Morrow is up around 120 yards. Roach is uh, close to the 180-yard mark. It's fourth down and two. 3.03 to play. Tilkey to the end zone. It's a touchdown. Travis Lenz made the catch. A one-handed grab. And Menominee has scored again. Great call on fourth down. Fourth and short. Play action fake. Going. What a great fake by Trevor Tilkey. The quarterback kept it and found Travis Lenz who made a good catch in the end zone. The kick by Brent Miller is good. And it's 49 to 31. Menominee leading Ashwabanon. Tilkey with his second touchdown pass. Each one has gone to Travis Lenz, the tight end. Pat, you take a look at this last quarter and you see uh, just a, two mistakes on the part of a Schwabanon and then the special teams play uh, and now the final drive by Menominee. Just turn the game around. Menominee in the driver's seat now. Again, their only loss all year was to Cambridge High School, 47 to nothing. Now, Cambridge is one of the top-ranked big schools in Minnesota. Last week, Menominee broke the 43-game winning streak of Monroe. That streak, by the way, was only five short of the state record of 48 set by Manitowoc back in the mid-1980s. Here's Aaron Stecker. Stecker to the 20. Stecker to the 30. Stecker cutting back, and he is tackled at the 37-yard line. A 31-yard return. His total offense tonight is going to be somewhere around 500 yards. We're talking about one man. Aaron Stecker again displaying his uh, unique ability to be able to change direction, cut back inside, slash. Ashwabanon with a big play offense. They need a big play right here. This is a new record for scoring in a Division II title game. Borowitz rifling it, and it's knocked away at the last second on the play. Knocked away by Aaron uh, Jason Smith. Number five. And had he not knocked it away, it might have been a touchdown. Because John May was out there. Shotgun formation. The defensive secondary from Menominee has done an excellent job all evening covering the receivers. Two and a half minutes to play. Borowitz to Glish and he cannot hang on. It's third down and 10. You talk a Springer there to break up the play. Glish might be shaken up. He ran that crossing pattern and he was met head on. Here's the play again. 
Aaron nice Larson. Defense again. Larson lowered a shoulder into, into uh, the receiver Glish as he was going by. Might have got one in the rib cage that time. Third down and 10. Two minutes and 26 seconds to play. In the first half, each team scored 28 points. Really, it's been the defense of Menominee in the second half, which has turned the game around. Ashwabanon suffering that one critical turnover when they were driving for a possible tying score late in the third quarter. And that really seemed to turn the game around. Here's Borowitz, and the ball bounces in front of a diving Brian Morgan. It'll be fourth and 10. Two minutes and 23 seconds to play. Ashwabanon came into the game 11 and 1. Their really? offense did the job tonight, Bill. They just couldn't stop Menominee. That's right. And, and just those few mistakes, uh, the fumbled reception on the, about the 20-yard line when they were had a drive going, the fumble of, of the, uh, into the end zone, uh, plus the special teams of uh, Menominee. Horowitz on fourth down, fumbles, and that'll do it. Brian Tkachuk forcing the fumble. It doesn't matter. It happened on fourth down anyway. And Menominee takes over on downs. And now it's just a matter of time. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play. And the Menominee Indians are going to be the Division II state champions. Excellent job of rushing the passer again. This has been a problem for Borowitz all evening, being able to have enough time to throw. Uh, particularly on the uh, deeper patterns. The quarterback Tilke to Adam Roach. Roach running hard for six yards. Under two minutes to play. The play that gave Menominee the lead for good was the 50 yard touchdown pass from Tilke to Lenz in the third quarter. That made it 35-28. Then Ashwabanon came back and drove the length of the field only to fumble the ball into the end zone. Here's a running play that will be stopped by Tim Saha. Roach, the ball carrier, just over a minute to play. Well, Bill Bartholomew, I want to thank you. You've been a pleasure to work with here during the two days we've spent in Madison. We've seen some pretty good football. It's just been uh, an excellent playoff, and it seems that every year they get a little bit better. Uh, the matchups uh, each year, year in and year out, are, are outstanding. And as we mentioned uh, throughout the playoffs, to be able to come to the, uh, be able to make it this far is, is an outstanding achievement in itself. A first down on the running play up the middle. The ball carrier was Jason Broadwell. And now a little bit of a skirmish breaking out on the field. Now the head coach, Joe Labuda, yanking his kids back and saying, come on, guys, what are you doing? A little bit of frustration. Well, Joe Labuda doesn't want anything to tarnish this great win for a Menominee. Each team hit with a personal foul, so they will offset each other. And it will be a first and 10 for Menominee. 39 seconds to play. Menominee leading Ashwabanon by a score of 49 to 31. Well, Menominee playing without some key players, Kevin Path and Bill Engler. 
But I'll tell you, Mike Morrow sure came up huge in this game tonight, as did Adam Roach. You expected that. Adam's been great all year. Trevor Tilke with a couple of clutch touchdown passes to Travis Lenz. The kicker, Brent M Miller. Brent Miller has gotten his job done all year, or uh, all night. The defense, led by Brian Tkachuk, has been good enough to win the football game for Menominee. Well, we've seen this in, the, in, in all of these teams, how well they play together, but uh, while Menominee has Adam Roach, uh, they also have uh, an excellent team concept. Uh, each and every one of these players, whether it be defensive linemen, linebackers, defensive backs, played an integral part in, in this entire game tonight. Menominee, it's an outstanding football team. About to win their first state championship. There's the running play, off tackle to Adam Roach, to the 15 yard line and down. And that might be the final play. Joe Labuda gets the, uh, the ice water bath. And that'll do it. The Menominee Indians are the state champions in 1993, what a great moment for the Indians. I, I guess I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank uh